based on volunteers, volitional, are leveraging the social intelligence of Thailand or whatever it might be with a collective self-governance. And I will give you some illustrations of that shortly. So it's a connecting bridge between the local society and the global opportunities. So just imagine if the capital in waiting or the liability is 7 trillion US dollar for Thailand. 7,000 billion US dollar. Well, let's see. Well, you can apply the business bilance. Uh, you can see that the, the business bilance and the, the German approach is about uh, a kind of, of um, one to two to three to four years. You can put it into board of uh, directors maps like this, which we have been doing in Germany, where you can see which part of this context can be managed and which one will have an impact. So you combine the impact over time with what you have influence on. And it, what you have influence on is up to yourself. That's why the volitional dimension is so important. And this takes us to leadership and it takes us to a totally new combination of intangible assets and intellectual capital where the, in the middle is the community and the culture and the society. So you combine the um, opportunity space with leadership. And it might be called the triple knowledge lens. Uh, it might be called some other thing. But the issue is not the taxonomy here. It is to start to work on it. It could be uh, related to sustainability, the long-term capital. And this is a, one way to describe the, uh, some of the ecological dimensions, environmental value and value to society which goes beyond the um, metrics that we saw in the, the former presentation. The return on investment is much, much larger. But most of all, you start to see it when you sense the liability. And who are going to pay for that liability? If you and we are not doing anything right now, our kids, next generation. And they don't have a say. They are not even in this room today. So therefore, if we are not doing it right now, we are leaving a heritage that is worse. So therefore, we, we can actually start to prototype some models here. We can start to work on it, and I will share with you in, in the last remaining minutes some aspects. There is also a, a possibility to put it into a balance sheet, and you can start to get the totally new economics out of it. But the big learning is actually that we're moving from the corporate map to the environmental map. We're moving outside the enterprise that I touched upon this morning. And this is the policy agenda from Japan. The policy agenda from Japan is both to work with intellectual asset management, but also the context for the business. To have another approach to policy. And of course, this is leadership. And if you just want to have some keywords for the new leadership, it's not to be at the horse, it's not to be at the computer, it, it's probably much more to be um, in the shit or the context, in the culture. So therefore, it's navigation. And there's a new phrase, which I will explain to you, called CEO. But it's about cultivation. It's about the integrator that we saw in the last slide from the last presentation but it's also to energize, to be the inspirator for the future. And it's not about motivation, it's about inspiration. And you can also get a map of it like this, where you combine the metrics with time and the longitude, and the longitude space is the fourth dimension. It's what's in the box here. And your travel might be like this, this arrow, very bumpy, going in all directions. But you can try to straight it out. But when you start to realize that it's going from the left corner up to the right corner, it's third dimension in a context which gives you a fourth dimension. So it's not that simple to have put numbers on it. But you can always put your senses to it. And I will share some of that. When you start to work with your senses and the sense-making, 
You, it's a different playing ground. It's a different mind process. It's something that goes from the economical dimensions to the culture. So which side of the playing ground do we want to be on? The old one with the economical numbers or the new one which is based on the energy and the values and the culture? And here in Thailand you have a tremendous opportunity over some of the countries that are leading the economies of today. Because you have the values, you have the culture, you have the unique history. Don't copy, be a good or origin. So the knowledge leadership is about wealth in relationship capital. The wealth in the smile, the tight touch. And it's about the stakeholder innovation, like we heard of, um, related to Air Asia. This is a very soft and intangible dimension. It's a care dimension. It's a big challenge. And I was working on it in Scandia. We started to work on it with architecture. And it not, it's not computerized architecture. It's the way you are sitting at the computer. It's about the way you interplay with technology. It's about the smell of technology. It's about the s sound of the technology. You know that the sound level of the fan of this ventilation system has an impact on your brain right now. So just take a few seconds and listen to the ventilation here. Do you think it has a good impact or a bad impact? Can you raise your hand if it's a good impact? No. It's the same with the fan of your computer. And it's the same with the radiation from your mobile phone. So there are a lot of very soft issues to take care of in the leadership of the future. This is the new factory in Germany, in Leipzig, for production of BMW. What are these people sitting under the cars going under the roof doing? They are eating. So you can actually produce a totally new workshop with this kind of quality of, of, that you are sitting in more or less a restaurant or a good canteen here working and the products are going up there on the conveyor belt. And this is a, a landscape in, in Sweden in an office space. It's called the psychosocial landscape. The impact of the chairs, the impact of the tables, the impact of the light, the impact of the air, the oxygen in the room. So how much oxygen is it now in this room? Is it increasing or decreasing? How many oxygens do you think there is in the boardroom after some hours? What kind of impact will that have on the quality of decision making? Do you think that the more hours you work, the better it becomes? It's the contrary. The fewer hours, the speed in that interaction is essential. Because then you keep the energy, you keep this oxygen, and therefore we need to have architects, leaders for this kind of psychosocial landscape. So we need to look for open space meetings, open space technology, knowledge cafes is another word for it. And therefore, the knowledge economy is about how we organize for the interaction. It's an organizational concept. So if I said this morning that the relational capital is important, now comes that the next step is the organization of the relational capital. So that is called organizational capital. And if you take one very simple illustration and look at three watches, the market clock, your own individual clock, and then the organizational clock, which one is running with the slowest speed? Which one? Yes. The organization clock is always running behind. The organizational clock is always out of touch with reality. So that's why you have continuous reorganization. So how do you speed up with innovations the organizational clock? That is the leadership challenge. And that is the longitude dimension. So the renewal space is to avoid these downturns of the life cycle curve. And that is, of course, a combination of chaos and order how you combine chaos and order into chaotic time and organization. It's about organizational innovation. MIT, um, Peter Senge's home base, was having um, um, this article last year, um, how management innovation happens. 
95% of all innovations are product.